नधातम अग्निपूर्वे ऋषिधिडो नूतन स देवाक्षते अग्निनाषमे दिवे दिवे यशसम वीरभक्तम अग्नेज्ञमर पूरत पिभूरसे सर्वे वशं गमिष्य अग्निर्भूता कविक्रतु सत्यश्रवस्तम देवो दिरागम ओ In those ancient days, there were important events when sacrifices were performed. A sacrifice was an occasion when gifts were distributed to a number of learned people. Vajrasa had a son named Nachiketas. Nachiketas saw. that his father was distributing gifts consisting of cattle but he observed that the cattle were old and the organs were worn out he knew that one should not give gifts which do not have much value he knew that the gifts given should have consisted of cattle which were young able and energetic what is the point of giving gifts which would be a burden to those to whom the gifts were being given this question began to arise in his mind again and again nachiketas knew that he was young very energetic and that he would be truly useful if his father chose to give him away as a gift me or my father to whom will thou give yatra brahma vidu yanti did not appreciate this question in fact He was disturbed. He did not reply. But Nachiketas was sincere and ready to be sacrificed. 
He very much wanted his father's sacrifice to be truly useful and fruitful. Me, O oh my father, to whom wilt thou give? Yatra Brahma Vido Yanti Vikraya Tapasasaha Indro Matatra Nayatu Balamindro Dathatume Om Indraya Swaha Me, O oh my father, to whom wilt thou give? To death, I give this. Antariksham Shanti Vishavi Shanti Apahar Shanti Oshadhaya Shanti Vanaspataya Shanti Vishwe Deva Shanti Brahma A pilgrim of the everlasting truth, our measures cannot hold his measureless mind. He has turned from the voices of the narrow realm and left the little lane of human time. Nachiketas was then led to the realm of death, where he waited to be received by Yama. Only after three nights did Yama appear. Three nights thou hast dwelt in my house, a guest worthy of reverence, salutations to thee. May happiness be showered on me. Therefore, three boons do thou choose, for each night a boon. Tranquilized in his thought and serene of mind, he the Gautama, my father. Let his passion over me pass away from him. Assured in heart, let him greet me from thy grasp delivered. This boon I choose, the first of three. Mm -hmm. Even as before, assured in heart, and by me released, shall he be. O the lucky Arumi, thy father, sweetly shall he sleep through the night, and his passion shall pass away from him, having seen thee from death's jaws delivered. There is a 
higher world in which there is no fear, in which death cannot enter, and where one does not become old, and one has no terrors of old age. It is said that such a heaven exists, but one cannot enter into that heaven if one has not conquered his earthly nature. And one can conquer his earthly nature only if one can kindle the heavenly fire. It is said that this fire is concealed in the unconscious part of our being. Hence, please, explain to me what this fire is and how one should awaken that fire and how one should practice the austerities with regard to that fire. This Oyama is the second boon that I have chosen. This fire is not the fire that we normally see in this physical world. This fire is not the fire that burns you when you touch it. That flame is the possession of infinite existence and the possession of the foundation. That heavenly flame can be experienced by you if and when you enter into your heart. Your inner heart is like a deep cave and when you travel into that cave, and go deeper and deeper, you will find that it is hidden in the secret cave of our being. He found the occult cave, the mystic door, near to the well of vision in the soul, and entered where the wings of glory brood in the sunlit space where all is forever known. Mahata Parama Vyaktam Vyaktat Purusha Para Purushana Param Kinchit Sakashtha Saparagati Esha Sarveshu Bhuteshu Kudhotmana Prakashate Trishyate Tvagraya Buddha Sukshmaya Sukshma Darshyate Yama then further explained that that heavenly flame has been placed in the great darkness that was wrapped in darkness when the world had just begun to be formed. In the beginning of the world, when darkness was wrapped in darkness, it was found that only if that heavenly flame, which had its home far away, in the uppermost space of infinite energy and infinite being was brought down into the darkness could dispel that darkness. That is why that heavenly flame was planted in the darkness. It is by the working of the flame that the physical world was built. And then all the other worlds also came to be built. There is nothing in the world which has not been produced by that flame. That flame, Agni, is thus called Jatavedas, the one who knows all that is formed or born. Yama explains to Nachiketas the secret of the method by which that heavenly flame could rise from darkness 
to matter, matter to life, and from life to mind. And how it entered into the cave of the heart of every one of us. That heavenly flame could rise from darkness to matter, from matter to life, and from life to mind. And it enters into the cave of the heart of every one of us. A prayer, a master act, a king idea, can link man's strength to a transcendent force. Then, miracle is made the common rule. One mighty deed can change the course of things. A lonely thought becomes omnipotent. On account of your having known this secret knowledge of this flame, I give you one additional boon. Henceforward, this fire will now be called by your name, that is, Nachiketa's fire. And then, Yama gives him a necklace with many figures. The gift of this necklace was only given to the one who becomes the controller of the energies of nature. Nature is called Prakriti, and the one who controls Prakriti is the soul. Nachiketas had thus attained that high state of knowledge by which can be controlled. This heavenly flame which rises from matter to life and from life to mind and thus covers matter, life and mind is to be lighted in our own limited body, life and mind. Thereafter, one makes an offering of the physical consciousness vital consciousness and mental consciousness to the divine consciousness, then one finds the Lord of our being whom we adore and we are led to know the Brahman which is even beyond the Lord whom we adore. Then one goes beyond birth and death and on beholding the Brahman one attains to supreme peace. Who lights the three fires of Nachiketas and comes to union with the three and does the triple work. Beyond birth and death he crosses, for he finds the God of our adoration, the knower who is born from the Brahman, whom having beheld, he attains to surpassing peace. The third boon choose, O Nachiketa. This debate that there is over the man who has passed. Some say he is not. Some others say he is. That, thought by thee, I would know. This is the third boon of the boons of my choosing. First of all, he is asking about the man who has passed away, the man who has died. Secondly, he has heard different views about the man who passes away. In fact, he knows there is a debate. In the debate, there are two views. According to some, man is not, and according to others, 
man is. Therefore, Nachiketas wanted to know as to which of these two views was correct. Some say he is not. Some others say he is. This matter was debated even by the gods in olden times. It is not easy of knowledge, for very subtle is the law of it. O oh, Nachiketas, choose another boon. Do not ask me, do not urge me. Give up this question. Even by the gods was this debated. It is sure. And thou thyself hast said that it is not easy of knowledge. Never shall I find another like thee to tell of it. Nor is there any other boon that is its equal. Choose sons and grandsons who shall each live a hundred years. Choose much cattle and elephants and horses and gold. Choose a mighty reach of earth and thyself live as many years as thou wouldst choose. This boon, if thou deemest equal to that of thy asking, choose wealth and long living. I give thee thy desire of all desirable things, indeed, all desire that are hard to win in this world of mortals, all demand at thy pleasure. But do not ask the question about death, O Natiketa. Mortal man has these things only for a short time. Until the next day, O Yama. And the sharpness and glory of the senses by which he enjoys fades away. All life is temporary. Man is not to be satisfied by riches. Moreover, since I have seen thee, I shall in any case have riches, and I shall be able to live as long as thou shalt be our Lord. This boon alone, and no other, I shall choose nothing else. O Yama, this question which is debated, this question which is concerning the great path of this question, I need thy answer. This boon takes us into the secret that is hidden from us. No boon other than that boon is chosen by Nachiketas. I know the calm transcendence bears the world, the veiled inhabitant the silent Lord, I feel his secret act, his intimate fire. I hear the murmur of the cosmic voice. Yama was pleased with the persistence of Nachiketa. He saw that when all pleasant things were offered to him, he had rejected them all and remained firm in choosing that which was really good as distinguished from that which was pleasant. One thing is the good, quite another thing is the pleasant. Of these two, whoever chooses the good he is truly benefited, but he who chooses the pleasant, he falls from the aim of life. The wise chooses the good instead of the pleasant, but the dull soul chooses the pleasant rather than choosing the good which is truly beneficial. And thou, Nachiketas, has looked close at these objects of desire at those things that are pleasant and beautiful, and thou hast thrown them away from thee. Thou hast not entered into the net of riches in which many men sink into destruction. Yama continued, 
and made a distinction between the ignorance and the knowledge. He saw that Nachiketas had proved that he was truly desirous of the knowledge since he could not be tempted by so many desirable things. For far apart are these, opposite, divergent, one that is known as the ignorance, the other the knowledge. But Nachiketas I deem truly desirous of knowledge, whom so many desirable things could not tempt. Yama continued further and explained how people living in ignorance think, behave, and act. They who dwell in ignorance believe themselves to be very learned. They think they are very wise when they look at their own wit. But these men are bewildered. They wander about. They stumble round and round like blind men led by the blind. Their childish wit, bewildered and drunken by the illusion of riches, cannot open its eyes to see the passage to heaven. For he that thinks this world is and there is no other, comes again and again into death's thraldom. Yama now comes to describe how rare it is to find someone who is keen to hear of that truth, that reality, that supreme God who is immortal. He that is not easy even to be heard of by many, and of those that have heard, there are many who have not known him. A miracle is the man who can speak of him wisely or is skillful to win him. And when one is found, a miracle is the listener who can know God even when taught of him by another. Yama then explains to Nachiketas why we need the very best to teach us of him. The reason is that he is subtler than the most subtle, and he has many aspects. And therefore, an ordinary man cannot truly expound the knowledge of him. If he expounds, one will not be able to know him. An ordinary man cannot tell you of this, for thus told you cannot truly know this for he is thought of in many aspects. Yet, unless you are told of him by another, you cannot find your way to him, for he is subtler than subtlety, and logic cannot reach him. Yama, therefore, describes the knowledge concerning this wisdom, and explains that that wisdom cannot be obtained by mere thinking, and that it has got to be learned from another who has true knowledge, and who makes the listener as steadfast in truth as Nachiketas. He says, this wisdom is not to be had by reasoning, O beloved Nachiketas. Only when taught thee by another, it brings real knowledge the wisdom that thou hast gotten. Truly thou art steadfast in the truth. Such a questioner as thou art, may I meet with always. I know of treasure that it is not forever. For not by things unstable shall one attain that which is stable. Therefore, I heaped the fire of Nachiketas 
and by the sacrifice of transitory things, I won the eternal. When thou hast been given the possibility of possessions that men desire, and when thou hast the possibility of having firm foundation of this earth, an infinity of power, and the other shore of security, and praise and scope, and great fame chanted through the widest regions, even then thou didst cast these things from thee, as thou art strong and wise and steadfast. Yama then began to speak of God, who cannot be known by reasoning, but by spiritual yoga. He tells Nachiketas that that God is one from whom all things have come forth and is to be found in the deepest cave of our heart. Yama finds that Nachiketas is truly worthy of attaining that knowledge of immortality. And thus, he agrees to grant him the third boon. When one realizes God through spiritual yoga, and when that Ancient of Days is realized as one who has entered deep into that which is hidden and hard to see, because he is established in our secret being and lodged in the deep heart of things, then the wise and steadfast man casts away from him all that man calls joy and sorrow. When mortal man has hurt, when he has grasped, when he has with great effort separated that one who is righteous from his body, and when he wins that subtle being, then he has the delight of one who is himself delightful. And then he has attained. O oh, Nachiketas, I found thee as a wide open house in which that delight can live. He linked creation to the eternal sphere. His finite parts approached their absolutes. His action framed the movements of the gods. His will took up the reins of cosmic force. Now, we shall study the answers that Yama gives to Nachiketas to fulfill the third boon. What happens to man after he has passed away? Does he continue to exist? Does he cease to exist? Or is there anything in him that continues to exist? Or is there nothing in him that continues to exist? Is there anything in him which is so immortal that it can never cease to exist? These are the questions we shall try to explore and listen to the answers that Yama gives. Tell me of that which thou seest, otherwhere than in virtue, and otherwhere than in unrighteousness, otherwhere than in the created and the uncreated, otherwhere than in that which has been and that which shall be. He looks on hidden aspects and screened powers. He knows the law and natural line of things. The 
the seat or goal which all the Vedas glorify and which all austerities declare, for the desire of which men practice holy living. Of that will I tell thee in brief compass. Oh, is that goal, O oh, Nachiketas? teaching, nor by brain power, nor by much learning, but he whom this being chooses can win him, for to him this self bears his body. May we have the strength to kindle the Agni Nachiketas, for he is the bridge to those who do sacrifice. He is Brahman supreme and imperishable and the far shore of security to those who would cross this ocean. The ever wise, compassionate brilliances await the sound of the incarnate's voice to leap and bridge the chasms of ignorance and heal the hollow yearning gulfs of life and fill the abyss that is the universe. Arise, awake, find out the great ones and learn of them. For sharp as a razor's edge, hard to traverse and difficult of going is that path, say the sages. He that has known from very close the eater of sweetness, the jiva, the self within, who is lord of what was and what shall be, shrinks not thereafter from aught, nor abhors any. This is that thou seekest. This is Aditi, mother of the gods who was born through the prana and by the mingling of the elements had a being. Deep in the heart of things she has entered. There she is seated. This is that thou seekest. He from whom the sun arises and to whom the sun sets and in him are all the gods established. None passes beyond him. This is that thou seekest. The Purusha, the spirit within, who is no larger than the finger of a man. He is like a blazing fire that is without smoke. He is lord of his past and his future. He alone is today and he alone shall be tomorrow. This is that thou seekest. No, the swan, whose dwelling is in the purity. He is the Vasu in the inter-regions. The sacrificer at the altar, the guest in the vessel of the drinking. He is in man and in the great one. His home 
is in the law and his dwelling is in the firmament. He is all that is born of water and all that is born of earth and all that is born on the mountains. He is the truth and he is the mighty one. When this encased spirit that is in the body falls away from it, when he is freed from his casing, what is there then that remains? This is that thou seekest. Surely, O Gautama, I will tell thee of this secret and of the eternal Brahman and of what happens to the soul when one dies. For some enter a womb to the embodying of the spirit and others follow after the immovable. According to their deeds is their goal and after the measure of their revealed knowledge. This that wakes in the sleepers desire upon desire him they call the Bright One, Him Brahman, Him Immortality, and in Him are all the gods established. None goes beyond Him. This is that thou seekest. Even as the sun is the eye of all this world, Yet it is not soiled by the outward blemishes of the visual. So there is one spirit within all creatures. But the sorrow of this world soils it not, for it is beyond grief and its danger. This is the eternal Ashwatha tree, whose roots are aloft, but its branches are downward. It is he that is called the Bright One, and Brahman, and Immortality, and in him are all the worlds established. None goes beyond him. This is that thou seekest. When all the strings of the heart are rent asunder, even here, in this human birth, then the mortal becomes immortal. This is the whole teaching of the scriptures. A hundred and one are the nerves of the heart, and of all these, only one issues out through the head of the man. this, his soul mounts up to its immortal home, but the rest lead him to all sorts and conditions of birth in his passing. The Purusha, the spirit within, who is no larger than the finger of a man, is seated forever in the heart of creatures. One must separate him with patience from one's body as one separates a blade of grass from its main fiber. Thou shalt know him as the bright immortal, yea, the bright immortal. Kamasomas, 
Jyotirgamaya Mrityor Maam Amritam Gamaya Asato Ma Sadgamaya Tamaso Ma Jyotir Gamaya Mrityor Ma Mamritam Gamaya Asato ma sadgamaya Tamaso ma jyotir gamaya Mrityor ma mamritam gamaya Thus Let Nachiketas, with death for his teacher, win the god knowledge. He learned likewise the whole ordinance of the yoga. Thereafter, he obtained Brahman and became void of stain and void of death. So shall another be, who cometh likewise to the science of the spirit. Asato ma sadgamaya, tamaso ma jyotir gamaya, mrityor ma mamritam gamaya. A grand orchestra of spiritual powers, a diapason of soul interchange, harmonized, a oneness, deep, immeasurable. In these new worlds projected, he became a portion of the universal gaze. A station of the all inhabiting light. A ripple on a single sea of peace. 